All right, it's 7.04. Does anyone else feel like the energy is just wild um, this morning? Whew, it's incredible. And uh, there, was a, there was a big um, burst of energy on the Schumann this morning. So I think that that's partly what, I, what I've been picking up on because the energy is just of my mind is just thinking about all these possibilities. And uh, the, the energy of the Schumann went through the whole brainwave spectrum of, of human beings and lit up at like every key level. So that was amazing. And um, I thought that uh, there's a lot of different topics we could kind of focus in on. And I thought that what I would do today is talk about how the heck do we calm down? And then we'll do the calming meditation. How, do, how the heck do we calm down when there are there's so much going on? And what I feel is that so many of us have been like a light has turned on where clarity is possible. I'm really experiencing that myself. And it's so funny that it also, you know, showed on the Schumann this morning. So all the key hertz levels, even into the dream time, into the subconscious are lit up. And, um, but it's a little disconcerting, right? Because with the, the state of the outer world, the news, the economy, the politics, whatever, okay? We're being bombarded. And so that's what I want to focus on is to calm and center no matter what is going on in the outer world. Because truly there's always something. <laughs> it's just that right now we, we're so much more aware um, in some ways because it's... Um, you know, there's a lot of um, competition for our attention and attempts to get our attention. Okay, so I'm just going to calm down with you guys. I'm going to, to go there. Now, I talked about in my little ad for this and in the, and in the, the title about this being a 5D experience. Here's what I want to say about that. How do we maintain... A fifth dimensional, how do we get to and maintain a fifth dimensional state of energy in our body and field and then carry, you know, be that, carry that with us, be that throughout the day, hold that state. This is something in my view <laughs> that takes practice. It's, it certainly took me practice. It might take other people less practice, <laughs> but um, having to go through it all, I guess, helps me teach about it more is all I could think of. Um, the What I'm teaching today is a core aspect of this practice. And what we're going to be doing is the same thing that we did in the meditation last week. We're going to focus in on the heart. We're going to breathe into the heart, focus our atten attention and energy there ground to the center of the planet, okay, and at a, at a fifth dimensional and higher state, the golden core of the planet, and um, connect with the soul, the sun inside the heart, the soul, the bright light of the soul. Oh, I'm feeling calmer even just talking through what we're going to do. In the first meditation last week, I explained a lot of this in detail, so I'm not going to do that today. Today, I'm going to focus on um, just being in that state, and then we'll address whatever comes up. Now, how does this relate to calming the heck down? <laughs> you, can, you can return to the state, no matter what news you hear, and no matter what events happen. How do you do that? There's really a 
willingness um, that's required. I'm going to drink coffee while I talk to you. Um, on the part of, of yourself <laughs> and of myself doing this practice. The willingness is to, to trust, to, to be willing to have trust that that love in the heart is always there and present for us. And in my view, this is a greater love than we can generate on our own. It's a love that is a part of the divinity that we are. But through the soul, the living soul that we are, which is direct from the creator or direct from source, from, from um, God who created us. Um, and um, so there, there's a willingness to trust that we have access to that love because the willingness to connect and generate that within is what is at the basis of a fifth dimensional state of being. <laughs> That's a big secret that I'm sharing with you that, well, if you, if you, if you are able to achieve 5D, you already know that, I'm guessing. Okay, so the next thing would be faith. <laughs> to know that it's always there for you and is never going to leave you, and that the soul is always present. Even when we have those moments of turning away, and then we turn back, right, to within, that, that we're never abandoned. Okay, even that calms me down, just even saying that. And there's a third thing that I want to bring up, which is the ability to be in the present moment. Now, that's something that's easy to say. And how do we live it? How do we embody it? How does it help us calm down? And how does it help us deal with challenging life circumstances and maybe even challenging decisions? I mean, there's a lot changing in the world. And that that invites us to make choices and decisions in our lives that we maybe might not have been ready to make or knew we had to make, and suddenly we're like, I got to do this, or I need to think about this, or like I said, we have that clarity just springing forth. Okay, so the first thing is the blessing of the moment. Um, there's a willingness here as well, okay, being willing. I'm willing, no matter what the challenge is, to look for the blessing of the moment immediately. It used to take me sometimes weeks or months to find the blessing and the challenge. But now I'm at the place where usually I can find it the same day. And sometimes I even in the moment, I have a sense where where this could turn into a blessing. And my willingness to look at the greater picture puts me into a state of wholeness and non-duality. <laughs> which is a fifth dimensional state of being and is much more calming than the narrow focus that we can get into, right? When it's just the human um, state alone, with the physical and all the body functions where a lot of times is where we live. Mm. Yeah. If you're listening, you can just as you're listening, you can just breathe into the heart. And then we're going to, I'm going to play the bells for in a sec. Uh, the other thing was to be willing to just let it go. So this is what I mean by that. When something comes into focus and is just, hey, get my attention, get, you know, here, put your attention here right now to have the willingness to dismiss it and essentially put it outside your energy field. So if this bowl represents my, put it on this size of the microphone, represents my energy field. So I'm inside the field and this is my bowl, right? And my um, firm boundary, which I think is helpful to imagine that you have a firm sphere, right? Oh, that's a boundary. 
in all directions <laughs> um, around you. So my so what happens is whatever it is, a thought, an emotion, a piece of news approaches me. Okay, so here it is. It's approaching me. This is the red ball. And it wants to get inside. <laughs> and what I can do is I can just observe it. And if I stay in that state of love, I can observe it in a state of neutral. I can choose not to allow it to turn into an emotion within me or a set of thoughts. Wow, this is big, right? So what I do is I look at it and the first thing is a blessing, you know, and it's not a blessing for what's outside me. It's a blessing for me because I have to deal with this. Maybe, you know, maybe I can just walk away and it's gone. I don't know. But, but if I'm sitting in meditation and this extraneous thing comes at me, oh my God, the news of whatever. I can just look at it and instead of focusing on what's there, I look at it from within my heart. I look at it from that loving state and I allow the loving state to be my focus no matter where my eyes are turned, no matter where my thoughts want to go. I don't know what that was. Something just fell. <laughs> huh? There was a shift, right? Was there a shift as you thought about that? Sometimes stuff just falls. Um, usually when it happens, it's the bowls. <laughs> they just move on their own. <laughs> Thankfully, they're in place. Okay, so so this is a tr this is a something that probably needs to be practiced. So I'm going to remind us about that when we, when we're in the space of the meditation. Okay. But now I'm going to use this as my drumstick <laughs> and I'm going to use the bowl to generate um, a cool low tone. And the nice thing about these bowls and this one in particular, it's got a very deep tone and you can commune with this tone just listen to it so it's, it's a vibration right it's a frequency and a vibration but um i find that these bowls are helpful for allowing what is not my highest good to vibrate out of my field we talked about that in the first meditation also okay so let's breathe I'm seated and I have my feet on the floor. I'm acknowledging my human form. I'm acknowledging my human form with gratitude because it allows me to be present, right? If I was an angel, I wouldn't have this right now. <laughs> I would just be standing beside me. Hey there. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm just calling in my well, my guardian angel right here. Let's call in Archangel Michael as well for this. The Archangel of security, protection, and the embodiment of divine will. I like to call him in for protection of the space. And Raphael, Archangel Raphael, Uriel, and Gabriel. The, these are the four archangels mentioned in the Bible. Hmm. Just imagine them surrounding my space. You can imagine them surrounding your space if you wish to. <laughs> and in the space of this sacred online space, the online classroom, the online meditation space, I'm asking them to be present and for love to be there, to be here with us in this space and I'm filled with gratitude, gratitude to be here and gratitude to be here with you. And that gratitude feels like the love I feel in my heart. I breathe in and I breathe out. 
Now call to mind the feeling of love, the thought of love, the knowing of love in your heart. Have that be in your heart. In my heart. That's where I focus on it. You can generate the image of a loving moment from childhood, from adulthood, from from this morning. (laughs) Whatever works for you there. From a movie, that would work if that helps generate that within you. All in alignment with the highest good, with your highest good, right? What I invite into my energy field or generate or transmit or receive is in alignment with my highest good. My highest good is in alignment with the highest good of all. Why is that? Because at a higher level, in my view, we are all souls, part of divinity, working together. Are we all one? Yes, but we're an individual form. And as a human being, I choose to honor that we are different, right? We're all and have our unique differences. But what's common is love. <laughs> mm. So I breathe in. I breathe out. Are you feeling it? Are you feeling the love? Okay. Now, I want to suggest that you imagine that love, right? That space in your heart expands. Expands to fill your heart. Expands to fill your chest. Expands to fill your head, your arms, your stomach, your abdomen. Fills down into your legs, to your feet and toes, to the wellspring under the arch of your foot, to the arms, to the hands. I am love now actively. I am the living form of love. (laughs) Doesn't that feel amazing? This is the fifth dimensional state of being. My cells, my energy, all that I am at every layer of dimensional state of being. I breathe in and I breathe out that love. I imagine it filling sphere of energy around me, the sphere of my energy field. I breathe in, I breathe out. Do you feel it? Now imagine that you could return to this state during the day. Okay? The state of love filling you. So right now we're breathing in and breathing out love through the heart. Imagining it fill the form, the human form, our bodies. We're energetically sovereign. So I'm in my own field, as are you. Although we're here together, our fields don't overlap. That's the definition of sovereignty, really. Of energetic sovereignty. I am the master of my domain, of my energy, which is my body and my field. Both are made of energy. Mm. Okay. Now, I'm in my field. I have a firm boundary, this beautiful sphere of energy in which I live. During the day, 
I can return to this state of being with a few breaths by allowing myself the space to do so, by allowing myself the moments of self-care that didn't take long, did it, right? Hmm. So as you breathe in and out, feel it, feel it in your hands. Feel the expandedness. And what this feels like is, to me, it feels warm. It feels buttery. The field feels, the field feels thicker. More like, I call it more like a plasma type feeling than just air. It's that same feeling that you have when you're connected in prayer, right? When you're praying to God, when you're sitting in a meditation, a Buddhist meditation, and you're fully centered, when you are at zero point doing energy work, this is the energy I'm describing. And many times we keep the spiritual part from ourselves during the day, but the blessing and opportunity in my view is to make it a part of the whole of who we are, to make it a part of our everyday living. Can we set boundaries in this state? Yes. Can we feel anger or fear in this state? Yes. But I don't have to continue creating once I sense it. I don't have to continue creating. So let's just give an example. But now as I'm talking about this, focus on the love. I, I sense something. I sense the invitation to fear. I check in. Is this mine? No. I let it be outside my field. I bless it, I wish it well, I give it to the angels of the highest light to wrap, to take to its place of highest good. It's God. It's not fun to play with me <laughs> when I do that, is it? I've declined to create. You see, when, when it's not generated from within, when there's not actually something to be concerned about, where the body gives me a signal, hey, pay attention, this is fear. It means pay attention to something in your life. Well, it's not mine. So if I focus on it, then what I do is use my life force to create it. As soon as I apply the focus, but from the state of calm, I look at it, I love do I love it? I love myself. I honor it for being a sovereign energetic state unto itself, perhaps generated by another being, perhaps a human, perhaps it's something I read. It doesn't matter. I just wish it well. Have a nice life. But I decline to, to create that with you. Isn't that cool? I've really found that this gives me a big um, sense of peace. But where you can get pushback on this is from people that you interact with in your life who want to you to participate in the fear drama. Um, and <clears throat> I just, you know, I'm just uh, honest and usually frank with people and i'll just say i'm just in um i'm just in a state of observation about it i don't feel the need to become fearful about it or to become concerned everything is you know all is well if i need to do something about that i'll be guided from within but as of this moment it's it's not mine but I can have compassion and understanding for someone who's expressing that. But I can also set boundaries that, no, I can't go into this with you right now because it's not, you know, I, I just, it's not where I can put my focus. <laughs> do I talk like this to people? I kind of do. <laughs> it's funny because now I'm going to tell you a story and I'll end up. And then if you have questions, let's, let's address them. But here's the story. I was in this online group for a while in 2021, and it was uh, it was local people, 
and I did my normal, you know, spiritual kind of postings that I do. And I ended up meeting one of the people because I was buying something from her. And we ended up hanging out for a while and just chatting. And it was so funny. I was laughing at myself because, because, and I just said to her, you know, how I post is actually how I talk, <laughs> what I, what I focus on in life. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I have found that combining the spiritual with the everyday really can work for me. And I invite you to um, see if you can let it work for you. Because in my view, this is the spiritual, the 5D to me, that is the same. Having an expanded state of consciousness and an expanded presence and state of being during the day, it's, um, there's, there's no separation between that and a relationship with God and our own soul, in my view. And I think that there's a misunderstanding about expanded consciousness, because I think that a lot of people relate expanded consciousness with intellectual ability and how much we know or don't know in terms of data. And the thing is, is the data isn't what's important. <laughs> the human experience is what's important. The human experience is what the blessing is. The data is an energy flow. And I bless the data and I honor the data for sometimes being helpful and sometimes just you know, being available, even if I don't need it. <clears throat> um, this is this is the thing about the computers and the AI, you know. It's, it's not about how much computing, you know, how much intellectual power that doesn't make something better, um, in my experience. And, and I say that because I, in my life, I've been extremely intellectual. And it got me into a big, a big zone of, I don't know how to solve these problems. The more I learned, the more information at my fingertips without the connection with God and my own soul, I, I felt like the more lost I was. And I ended up not feeling very well about things or myself. And that was where I had my awakening. So it was a blessing. All right. So it's 7.32 my time. We've been on for maybe 28 minutes. If anyone has any questions or wants to say anything, um, I'd be happy to chat with you. And if not, we can um, end the session. So I'm so grateful for your presence here. And... Hopefully chat is on because I don't see anything. Um, but Laurel, thank you for commenting. And Laurel, thank you for your um, presence on my comments and chats and your emails. <laughs> so I appreciate you. All right. <clears throat> okay, friends, thank you. Have an absolutely wonderful day. God bless you.